I say to myself, who watches this? <laughs> it's pretty scary, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. That's a different topic, different time. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be with you. I'm stunted for time, so I will stick close to the script. Okay? Uh, but I am going to rabbit trail slightly. Um, Jerusalem Prophecy Conference, Friends of Israel, Grace College, this is the date. They're going to make a decision by the 20th if they're actually going to do it. Just be in prayer about that. I would actually like to go, or for us to go, they have to say yes. So just be in prayer about that, all right? Uh, two key dates, milestones in this class. May 5th and May 11th. Ken and Betty are celebrating their wedding anniversary, don't say. Uh, May 5th. How many years do you think Ken and Betty have been married? 50. 50. Yeah. Do I hear 50? 50. Yeah. 60. Okay, 50. Is it 60? 60 years. Yeah. 60 years on May 5th. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, we have a very uh, interesting couple on May 11th. That would be my, myself and my wife. Uh, how many years? 25. 25. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, the Saturday uh, after, well, excuse me, the Sunday after this, which would be May 16, I think it is. And we're going to have um, um, Steve Lapeer um, teach that day. Um, he was here last evening. So. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, just a little housekeeping there. Um, all right. Now that I. Uh, Church of Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, does anybody need a, a lesson guide? I actually had one, or I had one. I actually stole it from a different class. It's regular print, not our usual print. So if you struggle to read the environment, this is not your book. Um, the lesson we're going over today is um, on page 75, I think. And the intro is about a movie, Dad. Dad, uh, Dad is a movie guy. He often will be inspired and we'll get a message late in the evening and he'd get all charged up over a movie and, <laughs> hey, go watch this movie, you know, kind of thing. Last night was no exception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last night's message to us, uh, I was on uh, ham radio late um, and we got a message. Uh, what time was it? 1026 last night. <laughs> so, uh, okay. But let me uh, let me start off this uh, church. I say church, right? It's not the building, it's the people, right? Pretty important that we are on the same page, is it not? Pretty important that we're unified. Now I say that because how easy is it to get off track? How easy is it to be disunified? How easy is it for us to get caught up in one another's idiosyncrasies and I don't like that person and I'm gonna sit over here and then we'll be over there and they won't bug me. Right? Has that ever happened that you're aware of? Not necessarily to you, don't raise your hand. That was a, <laughs> <laughs> just, right? I'm telling you, that happens, right? We must be on the same page. By the way, we do not have to be the same. The page that we need to be centered around is Christ, right? And doctrine, and those things, okay? We can't have differences, right? Do you, does anybody in this room think that my wife and I are on the same page in every area? 
Okay. Yeah. This cute little girl grew up in Panama. Do you think she and I had the same experiences? Right? You know, different experiences. Oftentimes I'll say, hey, honey, you remember when we were growing up? You know, and I'll say something about a memory that I had as a kid. And she'll pause and look at me with this. I'm like, sorry, I forgot. Right? Okay. I'm going to read the introduction here. In Remember the Titans, anyone, has anyone seen that movie? Yes. Okay. A movie based on the true story of T.C. William High School in Alexandria, Virginia in 1971. Denzel Washington plays Coach Herman Boone. In this movie adaptation, Coach Boone is in his first year of coaching a newly integrated football team. What makes this story so powerful is that it shows how a divided team and coaching staff go from fierce discord to strong unity uh, rooted in mutual friendship. As a result of this transformation, the team goes undefeated and wins the state title. Right? Great. The turning point is this. For the team comes, and by the way, the turning point in our own individual lives is this. We have to face our problems in a proper fashion. Okay? By the way, will there be division in the church? Will there be division in a marriage? Will there be division with your brothers and sisters, physically and spiritually? Of course. What do you need to do? What is the Bible's roadmap? And it's specifically mentioned in and around the Lord's Supper. It, the phrase that I remember is this. If you remember something when you're taking the Lord's Supper, what does it say to do, class? Go. Go. Does it say ignore? Does it say rationalize? Go reconcile. Right? Now, class, if someone comes up to you and says, can I have a couple few minutes? You're bugging me. <laughs> right? What is our normal fleshly reaction to something like that? In other words, you are doing something irritating to them. And they have the guts enough to mention it to you in love. How first off, how easy is that to do? Get over it. Okay, get over it. Okay. Right? But how easy is that to do? That takes what? It's not at all. It's hard. So, very difficult. Right? Okay. Now hold on, class. I'm gonna call you on the carpet here. Uh, I'm going to do it as an option. How many of you have been uh, have a personal relationship with the Lord more than 30 years? All right. Captured pretty much everybody. Close. All right. If you have walked with the Lord for 30 years and you have and you have taken communion during that time period, correct? <laughs> Abby. And you thought of anything that you needed to address with someone. You've had division. Yes? You've had irritations. Come on. Right? Yeah. You've had to address them, right? I was in a deacon's meeting. I was in a different church. My pastor at the time was saying, and he was going through this, and I said, okay, hold on a second. If I'm standing up front and I think of something, right? And I'm supposed to address this person, and I shouldn't take communion until I address it. I said, okay, practically, how do I actually do that? Because truly, when I asked a question, that happened to be the previous month. It, I'm serious. My job was to administer communion. And I'm like, ooh. I should probably maybe, but I was in a public kind of thing. He said, "Well, you shouldn't take communion, and you would go. You should go talk to him afterwards." What he said. Like, uh, What's that? Not about what the word said. Well, 
if I had thought of something and then taken it, well, I won't even tell you what I did, but <laughs> point is, we should address the issues, correct? Yeah. Okay. Can um, I make a comment, though? Yes, sir. <laughs> you I shouldn't wait until you take communion <laughs> to resolve those issues in the first place. But in the self-examination, the thought occurred to me that I really hadn't thought of before. Right. That's true. I don't know how you do communion, but I try to have a, and I mean, I try, I try to have a clean slate, but, you know, if a thought pops in your head, a thought pops in your head, I mean, I should probably address something. You know, and it wasn't, it was more me than them, or I don't know. That's just point is, we need to be unified in Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I just blew 10 minutes here. Um, but let me ask you, class, here um, the turning point uh, what motivates, what motivation for unity might the world give? Let me, uh, well, you know, actually, we. We don't have time to go through. Let, let's read First Corinthians chapter one, verse uh, ten through thirteen. I'm going to read this here and then ask a few questions here. Um, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and there be no divisions among you, but that you be uni but united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by close people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of you say, I follow Paul or Apollos or Cephas or Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Class, let me ask you something. Um, uh, there are two things we, we need to be united around. What are they? Well, he's looking at me like, what? <laughs> Let me read verse 10 again. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Now, class, let me ask you something. The lesson does not address, the two things are this, all of you agree and there be no divisions. Okay, senior saying, so let me ask you something. How, how do we all agree? And how, how can there be no divisions? I think you're saying limiting that to a few things, in this case, two things. He's not saying we have to agree in all things, but there are some certain things that we need to agree on. One of those, of course, is the fact that Christ provides our salvation. Yeah. Not Paul and not Peter and not anyone else. Well, he made the death and resurrection of Christ. He gets the one that we all get to, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think maybe you're on the maybe. <laughs> you know, agreeing on division. When we were at Grace Academy, there were what? Um, four different denominations who represented the student body and almost that many on the staff. From the seven to five, to Lutheran and Reform, and everything mm -hmm. in the middle. Well, we got asked because we majored on the basis. Yeah. yeah. And not on the minors and so on. Linda? You have to make sure that there's certain things you have to go to the mat for. Mm -hmm. Then there's other yeah. things that you have to agree to disagree on. Yeah. And yeah. you have to just know what those what those things are. Yeah. And if you can't agree, and the majority of the people there agree on something you don't agree with, then you have to find someplace else that will take that. But I've known church hoppers too, that they they keep looking for the perfect church. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that if you join it, then it becomes imperfect. Mm -hmm. Because because there's no such thing as a perfect church except for Jesus Christ and when probably when we all see him. Yep. Yep. I almost need to open up this can of worms here. Um, I'm just going to read the question. Over what kinds of trivial matters do you see Christians, us, uh, most often grow, grow divisive or divisive? What do we get hung up on? Alice, ooh, I got a big smile out of Alice on that one. Well, I, I mainly it's with our age group, the age of music, the 
The what? The music. Oh, music. It's hard to adjust to the different types of music for older people. Yep, that's a big one. The style of music, style of worship, right? Where are the bathrooms that are supposed to go in a new facility? I, I saw a church divide because of where their bathrooms were. Oh, that's right. That was so stupid. <laughs> I've heard of churches having a serious way of where the carpet should be blue and green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we would kind of look at the three R's, rules, regulations, and rituals. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. Kind of categorizes problems that yep. divide churches. Okay. Oh, she got another one. Go ahead. And so when we were remodeling the sanctuary, there was a lot of controversy because we have chairs and pews. And some lady walked up to the front and said, you can't remove the chairs here, I'm out of here. Right in the middle of the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's funny what things that people get bothered by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The church I was at prior, that's exactly what happened. People, people, we needed to put the chairs in because we could get more people in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and we did remove <coughs> it, but there were five families that left the church because of the pew. And part of that reason was they sacrificed to buy the pew to begin with. And, sure. and so they felt invested in those pews. But um, but yeah, it was, it was a big problem. Okay, yeah, here, let me uh, let me throw one other one out of here. You know, uh, it, it, I almost hate saying this name of this church, but there's a church, church yet? Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, there's a church uh, near here, just tell us one. Uh, I said just tell us one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. That they wanted to um, um, add on to the church, and there was a group that decided that uh, the outside of the church should be bright. And there was a division amongst the church based upon the outward appearance of the physical building. So literally, the church split in two. And one group went and built a, a church that looked, it was a, it was a brick church. And the other one was, I don't even know what the other one was. It was a, it was something other than brick. Okay. But, all right. I'm going to draw a kind of funny church, okay? Sad, funny. Dennis? With the wide range of agencies, and that was your fellowship circle. Your fellowship circle will be much smaller than your work circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. The different agencies couldn't do the work together, but your fellowship circle. Uh, all right, class, I'm going to put my finger on a hot button that you haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> and I literally just toss a softball. I thought you're going to knock it out of the park. <laughs> okay. What have we just gone through and what are we still in? What piece of cloth has been a major dividing point? Amongst your society for the past nine months at least. Oh, and I'm not talking about Hanukkah. Mass. <laughs> about a mask. Yeah. Right? Right. Okay. okay? Has that not been a hot point in Christian circles? That's right. Oh, yeah. Have people left churches yeah. because of it? Yeah. And I'm telling you, yes. That's not keeping the main thing the main thing. And I, look, I am as guilty as anybody else, right? Yeah, you're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, no, I do it. Because I think, so, look, I, look, I, I'll admit, sometimes we get hung up over stupid stuff. We do. I'll tell you another one. If there's anything coming between the gospel and, and possibly an unsaved person or growing someone in Christ, that's wrong. I don't care what your label is. Yeah. It is. I, I'll give you another one. We just went through it this past year, and it wasn't COVID. It was called politics. You want to offend someone? Bring it up and talk about it. You talk about 
a wall being built? <laughs> Forget it. Right? How about this? Her favorite, you know, pastor preacher. Well, I like this guy or this guy or, you know, we form opinions of someone based upon the, the people that they listen to or follow. Paul's addressing it. The church is to be unified, correct? What's it to be unified? Second point, the church is to be unified by the gospel. Verse, I'm going to read verse 17 and 18 here. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, now, by the way, whenever Paul says this, I have a hard time with that. Because who is Paul? Paul's one of the most well-educated men during this time period. And he says, you know, I wasn't trying to talk people. He was who he was. He was the most trained, talented individual during this time period, in my opinion. Would you agree with that? And the disciples. Sure. Sure. My translation uses the word cleverness there, which I think is a better translation. Yeah, you know, some preachers are clever in psychologically manipulating the people. I think yeah. Paul is saying, I'm not doing that. That is a better insight uh, than what is written here. I agree with that. And uh, if you present the gospel in a way to create an outcome, that's not the correct way to present the gospel. Right? You need to present it. But let allow the room for the Holy Spirit to work, not to maneuver emotionally someone into making a decision. Um, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Unity is not uniformity. Yeah. Okay? Unity in, in the church consists of possessing common allegiances to the same core beliefs and values, i.e., what? Jesus and the gospel. Right? Even while there are differences among them, 1 Corinthians 1.13, Paul asks, is Christ divided? The obvious answer to this question is what, class? No. 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 By the way, is the triune God we serve divided? No. 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 The obvious answer is question is no. Paul knew of Jesus' presence in heaven and his existence in, in, in one piece. So Paul's point was that if Christ is not divided, but parts to a whole, not, then neither should the church be, uh, be uh, excuse me, then neither should the church act divisively because the church is his body. By the way, divisively or divisively? <laughs> huh? The potato or potato? <laughs> potato. potato. Right? <laughs> yes. Um, let me read Tony Evans here, the little uh, voice yeah. from the church. If the choir is singing in great harmony, it's not because they are singing the same parts. It's because they are adding their part to the same song. It is the goal that produces the unity. Unity is not sameness. Unity has to do with the same purpose. Anybody know who Tony Evans is? Yeah, yes. Right? Great preacher. Yes. When you get, um, I always told my mother I should have been named Harmony because, number one, it's more my personality to a certain extent, but also I love to sing Harmony when I'm singing. And the, you can have a wonderful, wonderful vocalist that sings just one you know, part, but you add the harmonies to yeah. it, and it just becomes even more sure. you know, rich. Rich, exactly. Rich. Hey, this was the first, first time that I ever sat in front of her, but I thoroughly enjoyed this morning because she was really a good <laughs> <Yeah>. singer. <laughs> uh, so if I sit in front of you again, it's because I'm trying to. <laughs> Have you ever tried to open the pop bottle with one hand? <laughs> I'm 
Yeah. Open a Bible with one hand. Yeah. Now, the point I'm making here is the fact that in the church, as in the body, we have many different parts, as you were saying. The left hand and the right hand work together over the body of Paul. It's impossible to do without just one hand and nothing else to help. So the harmony exists there in that they are helpless, but they are not the same. Likewise, in the body of Christ, the church, we each have our own individual places to play, parts to play in the overall program, functions to perform, yeah. that help one another. Yeah. They're not the same. Folks, we cannot, we cannot re unify in purpose in, in the person that we are um, um, uh, following. We cannot reach the world if we are robots of each other. Okay, We need to have diversity to reach the world because the world is diverse. I mean, it just is. Jay, do you have a comment? I'm just, just adding on to what uh, Harold was saying. I, I think the problem with this, you know, differentness within the church, and Paul addresses this by mm -hmm. hand with, with the eye. We all have a particular <coughs> role, but the critical part is, and I think part of the hampers the appreciation of that, is that we sent, tend to assign more value to one part, the <coughs> member of the church, than another. We are all of equal value because we are all assigned to our various parts in the body to get one job done. Yep. And that's to reach the world. Yep. Well, last week, remember, uh, missionaries cannot do what they do without people holding the rope. Yeah. Remember that illustration? Yeah. Can't. Can't do it. And we need to be able to function, not only us, but in you know, sending out as well. Um, I want to read this little uh, fill in the blank here and then we've got to move to the next point. But unity of the church. Christ's desire for the church is that we be united as one in him by what class? The gospel. Reflecting the oneness of our Trinitarian God. As such, we are to allow for no divisions to separate us. We are different from each other. We're talking divisions where you're pitted against one another. Right? Such as ethnicity, socioeconomics, nationality, language, politics, or secondary doctrinal beliefs. Our objective is not simply to work around or look past these differences within the body of Christ, but to what? Celebrate the diversity. By the way, if someone has differences with you and it's not on core stuff, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, but to celebrate the diversity of God's people, made one in what class? We are made one around who? Christ. That's right. Let it go. Not preaching to me too. Uh, third point. The church is to be united by the gospel to show the world Jesus' power. Class, let me ask you something. What is a major turn off to you? What do you think the world's turn off is of the church? I think some things, I, I've had this experience, some things is the world's perception of what the church is. And there's also some people in churches that are so out there that they give the church a bad name, too. But um, I had, I, my, one of the jobs I used to hold was I did pre-service for uh, things that you needed to do, um, like x-rays and CAT scans and stuff like that. And I had a lady that came in and she was she was an actress. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she didn't know where I stood, you know, at that point. I never had seen her before. But she says, I, I have to I have to get this done so I can go out and buy some really dark clothes and dark stockings because I'm going to play this this mm -hmm. strong Christian. And I'm going <laughs> And I and I'm going. Since I said, since when do you think that Christians only wear dark clothes and dark stockings? <laughs> and it was just her, what she thought a strong Christian was was going to be. Well, people have perceptions of believers, don't they? Yeah. I mean, we have perceptions, right? Yeah. Um, it's only when. 
when they get to know us and we show them the love of our Savior that they, well, maybe I was wrong. Hopefully we don't reinforce false beliefs when they get to know us. Maybe the problem, and I frankly suspect that it is a problem, we don't live a joyful life. I'm not going to blame the world. I think it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. How many times do you, you know, in all things rejoice, right? Mm -hmm. How often do we do that? All things give thanks. We don't. Uh, we need to work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to demonstrate the love of Christ by living. That's right. You know, that's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. But we do have the Holy Spirit to get the job done. Well, I'll tell you what, class, if you want to open the door to someone's heart, help them in time of need. Yeah. I mean, and do it unexpectedly with nothing, wanting nothing in return, just to meet their need. Somebody's going to go through a really hard time with a, with a spirit that is giving and, and positive. And people say, they look at you and they want to know, why is it that you're so different than I am? If I had been doing this, it would have been you know, totally floored me. And uh, it's, it's amazing because it seems it's so easy then to talk to them about the Lord because they say, why are you different? And I go, thank you. Right. You know, for you know, asking me that question, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> and our daily preparation in the Word, in study, and in prayer will prepare us to have an answer on one of those days. If we're not in the Word on a consistent basis, we, we're not prepared. And there's been times where I've been unprepared. Okay. Give you an example. Um, this going through this thing with Ken this this last month. I uh, my sister asked for our old friends from way back to send us cards, or send me cards mostly, at, at the beginning, and because I was I was worried about his brain, which is doing really well, by the way. Um, but uh, I got this letter from a lady I haven't, I mean, I've seen her, I see her post on Facebook, but I haven't seen her in 50 years, maybe? And um, she said something in the card, and then immediately I liked it, you know, I was really appreciated, but, Appreciative to it, but then a few about an hour later, I started to, to resent it a little bit, and I'm going, and I'm saying, you know, that then I then I and I and the Lord tapped me on my shoulder and said, "Why are you doing that?" And so I had to realize that way back when I was like 14, she had been one of the kids that had bullied me. Not, she wasn't the worst, but she went along with it. And I realized that, you know what? I'm whole, I'm carrying on some, some bitterness I didn't even realize I had. Sure. And I had to confess it. But, uh, and, uh, and I feel much better about it now because I did. But too often, instead of dealing the sin in our lives, we kind of put it in a box and say it's not going to affect me, but it does <clears throat> in some way or some form eventually. Yeah. Join the, uh, yeah, in answer to your question a while ago, I think one big turn off for non Christians is dishonesty with Christians. Yeah. When people are saying and saying another, that turns them off big time. Yeah. 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 And if there was a crack in that door, it was just closed. I want to read uh, a couple of few verses here. Point number three, the church is to be unified, united by the gospel to show the world. And who are we trying to introduce the world to? We're trying to introduce the world to Jesus, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 19 through 21. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. I'm going to quickly read uh, John, <clears throat> 1, or excuse me, John 17, 20 through 23. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they 
uh, also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. Three parts can be one. I tell you what, folks, you know, when we're married, we're supposedly one, right? Are, are we all always on the same page? No, but we're one. Right? When deacons, when deacons or boards make decisions, before the decision is made, you can have diversity of thought, diversity of perspectives and opinions. Guess what? When the decision is made, it's our decision. That's right. Irregardless, if your thought was different than the decision that was arrived to, right? Right? Yeah. And when the leaders lead in a direction, this is what the carpet that we're gonna do, guess what? Yeah, that's our carpet. That's our drapes, that's our pews or chairs, or whatever, okay? We need to be happy for the blessings that we've been given, right? right? Um, we, gotta, uh, we gotta end. Any quick summary thoughts? Don't throw roadblocks in unbelievers life or other believers it's easy to get off track and it's hard enough to get on track but man if you're trying to lead someone to the lord and you throw a roadblock i mean this is all of us yeah i got i guess i've got to comment um i think we need to be very sensitive to the holy spirit because when we're off track he tells us yeah. we cannot ignore and the leading of the Holy Spirit. If we, if we just keep in tune and try to do what God has done, we're going to be okay. Yeah. Oh, would you pray? Heavenly yeah, Father, we do thank you for your love and your watchful care over us, for your many, many rich blessings. Lord, I ask that you would help each of us that we might be joyful Christians. Help us to really glory in you. May all of your goodness and rich blessings. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be faithful, that we present the testimony to the world that you want us to present, and that we would be uh, good workers, Lord, uh, living and presenting the gospel that others might hear and that they might be saved. Lord, I pray that you'd be with um, our business meeting that follows. May all things that are said and done be pleasing to you. Bless the watch over and protect us now and throughout this week. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.